Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time stopping by, feel free to subscribe down below if you like these kind of content. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know you're a real one. So in today's video, I'll be answering some of your faith-based questions. I asked you guys to send me a couple questions on social media regarding faith, and I got a good number of responses. So in this video, I'll be answering those questions. The first question is, what do you love most about God? I mean, what isn't there to love about God? He's good, he's holy, he's kind, he's loving, he's a good father, he's merciful. I mean, he is love. The very essence of God is love. But if I'm to mention one thing, I think I would say his heart because that is where his love for me and the whole world resides. So yes, I would say God's heart because God has the biggest heart in the world and he's just full of love, full of mercy, full of compassion. So yes, his heart. Your most memorable revelation or encounter with Christ? Um, a few come to mind actually. I've had a few with God and a few with other people who I know was definitely orchestrated by God. One of them is like instances where God told me things about people for the purpose of helping them out and I knew there's no way on earth I would have known that unless God told me himself. And there was also this occasion where a couple of my friends and I saved someone from committing suicide and yeah it's still mind-blowing there is no way i would have done that by my power or by god's grace and the way the whole story panned out it was just god maybe i'll make that into story time in the future if you guys want but yes it was just evidence that was the hand of god working and not my power or not my words but i think the encounters with god that actually get to me or the ones that make my heart melt are the ones where it's just me and god like intimate moments you know where i'm just like worshiping god and i can feel like the presence of god and i can feel like god embracing me and just that whole moment where it's just like god this is me like I don't know how to explain it really. I feel you just need to experience it because I don't have the words to describe it. But those ones really get me all the time. I look forward to them all the time. It's just like spending time with God and just basking in his presence and just enjoying his company really. Yes, I love those. The next question is, what would you do if your partner changes religion before or after marriage? Okay, this is a very serious question. But um, if it's before marriage, I mean, I would be curious to know what brought about that decision and how the person arrived at that decision because sometimes people go through a certain thing in life that just make them lose their faith in everything really and they go into the state of like depression or doubting so many things so if that's the case if there is anything I could do to help the person walk their way back to God I would also keep praying with the person and for the person to kind of find their salvation again I would also advise if it's possible maybe to part ways for a certain period of time to like make sure the person has found God or knows where their stand is in terms of their faith in God before we continue on with the relationship because at the end of the day that person's salvation is more important than my love for that person so if it means me stepping back just so the person could go through this whole process of finding God all over again and um, that's what we were doing that season and if it's God's will that we come back together things will turn around in the future. But in the case where it's after marriage, um, I think that one's a bit tricky because the Bible doesn't give those grounds for divorce. So what I would say is similar advice really, just praying for the person, praying with the person, having faith in God and just living a life pleasing to God and the life a Christian should. Because the Bible speaks about that as well. If you're with a spouse who is an unbeliever, just living your life to please God and living your life to serve God because then the person may see the way you're living your life and eventually come around. But yes, also praying for the person and kind of preaching the word of God to them as well in a way that they would be able to receive it but being patient with them as well because you can't change someone and you can't force someone to change. It could only be done by God's grace. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know, but yeah. The next question is, have you ever doubted your faith? If yes, how did you get through it? I feel like this is a very good question as well. Um, we all go through this moment where we have questions or we have doubt or we're in a state of confusion. 
So sometimes these things actually happen, but what I would say is if you're a Christian, my advice to you would be to spend more time with the word of God. I think Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you're having questions and doubt and you want to build your faith, the word of God is your only solution. Keep spending more time with God and he'll reveal himself to you. And the Bible has all the answers we could possibly need in the world. So if you have any questions or have any doubt, turn back to your Bible and I'm very sure you find the answers you're looking for. The next question, your favorite go-to preachers. So my all-time favorite preacher is Miles Monroe. I came across him just a couple years after he passed away and I fell in love with his sermons. His teachings are just so practical and spirit led at the same time. I have watched loads of his sermons and read a couple of his books as well. Another preacher I tend to listen to as well is T.D. Jakes, but not as much as I listen to Miles Monroe. I was recently introduced to a Ghanaian preacher, I think his name is Mensa or Tabel. I listened to one or two of his sermons and I love them, so maybe I listen to him more often. But yes, I don't really listen to many preachers at the moment because of where I am in terms of building my faith. I'm trying to know God's word for myself, so I've been spending more time studying the word of God by myself and for myself just so I get revelation from God and I understand what is in the Bible. So these days I mostly just tune into my local church service and study God's word for myself once in a while listen to sermons of course but not as much as I used to back then. So the next question is in Christianity for Christians is everyone forgiven after death and goes to heaven or there is a heaven and hell for Christians who decided to do bad in the world i think this is a very big question and i'll try to explain it as simply as possible so everyone gets it so the moment a person decides to confess their sins repent of their sins and give their lives to christ they become a christian and in that moment the person is forgiven and given eternal life so the person is like a new creation you could look at the person like a baby or given a new life basically an old record of sin is wiped so like a new slate to start your life afresh all over again so to answer the first part of your question we are forgiven here on earth and the moment you give your life to christ you were saved and you have eternal life which means you'll be going to heaven and eternity for you is sure to answer the second part of your question in christianity people don't go to hell because they were bad they go to hell because of unbelief, because they did not believe in God or they didn't give their lives to Christ. Because no one can really be good without God, really. And if people go to heaven because they're good, then none of us will actually make heaven because no one is good, really. We cannot be good without God. The thing about good in an earthly standard as well is people define good differently. Someone could define good as I do not steal, I do not kill, but I lie. However, I give stuff to charity, so I'm a good person. No, because the Bible says if you fall in short of one commandment, you're guilty of all. So that means we're all sinners because we've all committed at least one sin in our lives. In fact, we commit at least one sin every day. So no one is really good. And that is why we needed a savior to come and save us. Because we can't save ourselves from our sins. And I think that is where Christianity differs from other world religions. The next question is, what is one thing you have learned about building faith over the years? One thing I've learned is if you do not water your faith, there's no way it would grow. There is a popular saying that the grass is not greener on the other side, it's greener where you water it. So the same goes with our faith. If you don't water it, there's no way it would grow. Just like earthly relationships thrive off of getting time to know the person, being intentional, putting in the work, you know, doing the right things, the same goes into our relationship with God, we need to actually put in the work, be very intentional, plan to spend time with God, plan to get to know him better. If we do nothing about our faith, there's no way our faith will grow. So that is one thing I learned about building faith over the years. We have to be intentional, we have to make the effort. If not, there's no way it's going to grow. So what are your faith and it would grow. The next question is, how do you keep a consistent prayer life? So. I don't know if I'm qualified to answer this question because it's an area I'm trying to improve in myself but what I would say I have done in the past and what has worked for me as well is taking a 10-10-10 approach. I cannot remember where I found this but it's like when you're having your quiet time for example you can spend the first 10 minutes 
worshiping God, you know, praising God. For me, sometimes I speak in tongues in that period. And then the next 10 minutes to study the word of God. And then the last 10 minutes to pray. That would help you to kind of start somewhere. And then as you go, eventually you keep on building up the time and keep on increasing the time. to so a point where you're beginning to see improvement and growth in your prayer life. Another thing I do sometimes is I write down a list of prayer points of things I want to pray about so I do not forget because sometimes the enemy can trap us in this life. There is nothing to pray about, which is a big lie because there is so many things to pray about. Every day, the world strays farther and farther away from God and there are many things going on around the world so we have a lot to pray about. So what I normally do is write down a list of prayer points and go through them one after the other and pray for them. And most times I find once I'm done all that, I see like half an hour has gone by and it didn't feel like half an hour. So I'm like, wow, it actually doesn't take long to build a prayer life and to pray consistently. We just need to keep doing it. The Bible says pray without season. Other than that as well, what I do is I pray as I go during my day, you know, every part of my day, wherever I am. That's also one good thing about God. You don't need to be in a church to pray. You could be anywhere and pray to God. So I normally just pray as I go and during my day and pray to God, speak of the Holy Spirit throughout my day, asking him to help me or as certain things come to mind, praying about it. Sometimes the name would pop up in my mind and I'll just pray about the person. Other than the time I allocate for praying, maybe in the morning or evening, I also pray consistently throughout my whole day. Just so I bring God along through every part of my day and I don't just ignore him. For example, before recording this video as well, I pray to God. So putting God through every part of your life and praying through the whole process and eventually you build a consistent prayer life and make it a habit. Because at the end of the day, what is prayer? Prayer is communicating with God. So communicating with God through everything, you know, letting him know how you feel, what you think, asking him his will, asking him for guidance, for direction, even asking him to teach you what to pray about. So yes, I hope this tips help someone else. And the final question is, when you believe, does it mean you have faith? Um, if you're speaking about believing in God, yes, I would say if you believe in God, it means you have faith in God. Belief and faith are two words that could be used synonymously. So. I would say yes, if you believe in God, it means you have faith in God. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I was able to answer your questions. Feel free to leave a comment down below with your answers to these questions as well. Or if you have any more questions, you could also follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. I'll definitely respond to that. Thank you and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!